Hi guys, it's Yuma here. Welcome back to another one of my videos. In this one, I'm going to be showing you a daily money making guide I used to do when I was a lower level and I thought I'd just share it with you guys uh, today. So just before we get into the video, I'm going to show you each item individually and then the requirements I suggest uh, before you do that certain item. And then we're going to go into the actual video and I'm going to show you uh, the run itself. So yeah, without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So the different items I do during my run are as follows. So to start with, I do a herb run. So what you want to do is do the highest herb you can and then plant it and then uh, harvest the herbs once they have grown. The next item is buying yak hide, then buying raw meat and in the same area feathers. The next one is making crystal pots and flasks by mining certain glass. Using the wicked hood to make this wax, then using the same hood to make runes. Again, the higher rune crafting level you have, the better rune you can make. So yeah, so that is everything for the daily run. And now let's get into each one individually. So to start with, I do a herb run. Now there's seven different herb patches uh, to plant seeds. Six of them are normal. So torso, ira, stuff like that, dwarf weed. Then you have one in the wilderness called bloodweed and you plant a singular seed there. So in total, you need seven. Now it depends on your farmer level, it uh, depends what you can plant. So if you can't plant dwarf weeds, you can plant something a little bit lower level. And the same goes for bloodweed. You need a certain farmer level for that. But if you have it, then I recommend dwarf weed and bloodweed. Then the only major requirement uh, I recommend is a rake and a seed dibber, just so you can rake the weeds and then just plant the seeds in the patches. But if these are in your tool belt, then you don't need to worry. Other items I recommend for this herb run are magic secretaries. Now during the first fairy tale quest you can obtain these and what these do is have a chance of saving your harvest life by 10% so if you do this daily it can be worth your while. The first patch we go to is called uh, Trollheim um, so if you have two lore and two fire runes it's easy to teleport to this location. Because we are doing farming it takes some farming urns and if you do have it the urn enhancer which basically gives you more XP when a urn is teleported away. The best compost you can get your hands on, so I recommend Ultra Compost uh, because that only gives you a 7% chance of your herbs becoming deceased uh, compared to uh, Super Compost, which I think is 14. An attuned crystal teleport seed to teleport to a certain uh, place in Prif. I can't pronounce it at the moment, but I will just show you later in the video. A Juju farming potion is really useful because it gives you a 1 in 3 chance of picking a herb twice, which just increases your profit overall. If you do have it, I do recommend you use a Green Fingers Aura. And uh, what this basically does is stop your herbs from being diseased altogether if you use it before you plant your seed. And also gives you a 3% chance of getting more herbs, uh, which is just obviously useful as well. The Master Farming Outfit is really useful. It has a bunch of effects um, included. Uh, one of them is that you don't need to water your herbs if you have the full outfit on also has a 2% chance of saving a seed when you are sowing it um, if you also own the modified farmer's hat. Again, if you do own the modified farmer's hat, you can go to a number of different places such as Mauritania, the herb patch, and the Mala farm. If you own the Ardogno cloak at two or above, I think I've said that completely wrong. So this can be really useful for teleporting to different herb patches. Again, the tier two or above cloak, which teleports you to the Mala farm, if you do own the fourth tier, it will teleport you there as many times as you like. So that is useful as well. An Explorer's Ring um, tier three or above will just teleport you to the Cabbage Hair Patch. The first tier of the Wilderness Sword um, will just basically teleport you to the Hair Patch. So you just need to own the sword of any tier and it will do that for you. And lastly, the Modified Botanist Mask, which basically just teleports you to the Cafe B Hair Patch. A couple more things and that is turning the PvP mode off in the wilderness and um, because if you are doing herb runs in the wilderness you just don't want to get attacked and killed so by turning this off you are safe you just have to worry about the um, mobs in the wilderness but they're not too difficult to deal with. And lastly by completing the Egar's Ruse quest this will give you the ability to teleport to Trollheim um, until the quest is done you won't be able to use the teleport so I do recommend you do this as well. Now half these items you do not need, it's only the first three that you do need uh, because you do need to plant the seeds to get the herbs and then you do need the rake and the seed dibber just to do that as well. 
But most of the teleport items, you can just use lodestones if you don't own the item uh, to teleport very quickly. It just speeds up your herb runs if you do have the items. But if you don't, not to worry, uh, you can just use the lodestones and then run to the herb patches yourself. The next item on the list is called Yakide. Now, Yakide can be bought from a woman called Van Ligger. I hope I've said her name right. Uh, she is based on Jad Hidso, and you can only open up her shop midway through the Fremenic Isle quest. And at some point during the quest, you go to her and you have to tax her 5,000 coins. Now you can get her to pay it or you can pay it for her. But either way, this opens up the shop and you can buy Yakide. So once you get to this uh, point, uh, you can start doing this Yakide method. After you've bought the Yakide, um, the next item on the list is raw meat. Now raw meat can only be accessed after you've completed the quest as a first resort. But after you've completed the quest, you can go to the spa town of Uglog and then you can speak to the August cook called Chagu, I think, and you can buy uh, certain meat packs from her and then you can just sell it for a profit. Then once you've bought the raw meat, you can go to the general store, which is just opposite uh, the bank. It's called the gift shop and you have to complete the same quest and then you just go in and then you buy the feather packs at the bottom of the store and then you just open up the packs and then sell the feathers for a profit as well. The next item on the list is crystal and red sandstone. Now these two things can be mined to make certain flasks and they can make crystal and potion flasks. So you mine the stone and you make the flasks then you can sell the flasks for a profit. Now there's a few things I recommend before you do this. Um, the first thing is by completing as a first resort. Uh, this will basically give you the ability to make the potion flasks and the crystal flasks uh, from the sandstone. If you haven't completed this and you can still mine the sandstone, but you just won't be able to make it into flasks. Then I recommend a 81 mining level to actually mine the sandstone and a 89 crafting level to actually make the flasks of themselves. And then other than that, I recommend a pickaxe. Um, if you do argument it, it does give you some XP uh, while you do this, so that is useful. Uh, some mining urns because you are mining. And again, urn enhancers will just give you more XP when the urns have teleported away. The resource for aura is really useful because it gives you a 10% chance to give an additional red or crystal sandstone, uh, which does not contribute towards your daily limit. Because mining is a gathering skill, I do recommend you wear a Grace of the Elves. This basically gives you a 10% chance of a searing spirit to spawn. And if you do click the spirit, you do get a various uh, number of rewards. Also, if you do have the Luck of the Dwarves ring equipped as well, you can get better rewards such as the Hazelmere Signet ring. So it's just useful to have both equipped. Now, following on from the sandstone, there are a few locations to mine it. Now, one of the places is the Melnir, no, Melrir Resource Dungeon. I can't pronounce it. Uh, you do need to have completed the Plague's End quest and have 115 Dungeoneering to get into the dungeon itself. Now I haven't actually got 115 Dungeoneering uh, to access the dungeon, but I will show you where it is when we do our run. And if you do have the level required, then you can go into here. If not, you can skip it and then carry on with the rest of the uh, sandstone run itself. Just outside of the Uglog uh, Spa Town, there is a red sandstone location. Now you don't need to have completed the quest to actually mine here, only to make it. Um, but I do recommend you need 81 mining obviously to mine the red sandstone and there is a little shortcut that will help uh, dramatically getting into the town and all you need is 29 agility to do that. Now there are other sandstone locations uh, which I will show you uh, later on in the video but another place is the Sofenum uh, red sandstone location and to mine here you need to have completed the elite desert achievements uh, that will give you access to mine the sandstone itself and you have to have completed contact and the fights club as well. While you're doing the sandstone run uh, there is a merchant that sells these feathers off mat um, you don't need any requirements, any quests completed for this, apart from the fact you just need money to buy the feathers. Um, I think you can buy them for 1.5 mil and then you just sell them on the exchange for a profit. Okay, so just a couple more things before we get into the video itself. And that is with the Wicked Hood. Um, so the first thing is the Rune Goldberg Machine. So for this, I recommend you just need a minimum of 3k of each elemental room in your bank or inventory. Now you can use more expensive runes for this, but I feel like you make more of a profit by just using the elemental ones, but it's up to you, uh, it's just preference. Then it's just a couple of things I recommend. Uh, the first one is a Wicked Hood, and that just basically teleports you to the top floor of the Wizard's Tower. Then you go through a portal into the Runecrafting Guild, and the Rune Goldberg Machine is just inside. 
And if you do have 99 rule crafting, then I just recommend you bring the cape along or use it just before you leave. And this gives you the third rune for the day, then you just have to work out the first two. And what all this does is basically produce this wax uh, when you activate the machine. Uh, you can make up to 100 per day. It really just depends on the rune you put in and what smiley face is shown when you put the rune in. And once you've activated it, you get a number of this wax. Then you can sell it at the exchange or somewhere for a profit. And lastly, once you've done the this wax, you can use the same hood to teleport to certain altars. You can right click your hood to withdraw essence. Then you can use that essence to make certain runes. And then you can just sell the runes um, at the exchange or somewhere else. So to actually teleport to these altars, you need to have Wicked Hood teleport tokens in your hood. And these can be bought from the rune crafting shop for, I think, 1,500 a go. Or the way I have gotten them is by Treasure Hunter, uh, by opening antique chests, cosmetic chests, stuff like that, and then just adding the uh, tokens to the hood themselves. Now, until you infuse your hood with an Omni Talisman, you will only get normal essence instead of pure essence. But this is really easy to do. You just want to take one of each um, talisman to the rune crafting guild. You want to talk to your wizard Elvis and then show her each of the talismans. And then when you've done this, you get the Omni Talisman. Then you just want to like um, infuse that into your hood. But then you're good to go and you can just use pure essence to make your runes up. You can also show her a part completed hood um, infused with talismans and then just show her the remaining ones you need to complete the army talisman. Uh, you can also show her tiaras as well. It just depends what you have and then what you need just to complete the whole set and then you'll get the army talisman. And lastly, um, what I realized after making the video is if you have a wicked robe top, cape and legs, as well as your hood equipped, you get more essence uh, per day from your hood. And that just means you can get more uh, runes and then you can make more of a profit by selling them. Now in the video I will be making blood runes but it just depends on your rune crafting level and then you just want to make the highest rune you can and then sell it and then make a profit from that. Okay so now we have all the basic stuff out of the way it's time to get into the run itself. Now I'm going to show you how to do the run uh, my way and then hopefully you get a better understanding on what to do. Uh, along the way I will show you some tips and stuff so yeah let's get into it. Okay, so once you have the items in your inventory and you equip the items you need, you want to use two fire and law to teleport to Trollheim uh, using the teleport in your magic tab. Once you've teleported, you want to make your way west and there will be a shortcut to go down. So once you've gone down here, you just want to make your way south and then do exactly the same. And then once you've made your way down that shortcut, make your way west again and then you will end up at the bottom. Once you've made your way down the final shortcut, you just want to make your way north through this tunnel. Um, you don't have to use the shortcuts, you can just work your way down manually. This is just a quicker option. Once you've made it inside, you just want to make your way south and um, down this corridor. Uh, to your west, you will see a ladder, so you just click onto that. Then your character will just um, go around this door and then make their way up the ladder. Okay, so once you make your way up the ladder, you will end up at the first hair patch. Um, once you've got the compost in the leprechaun already, you just want to activate the aura if you have it and the GG potion. Then you just want to rake the first hair patch, add your seed and any compost in your inventory or from the leprechaun, and that is the first one done. Then what you want to do is just use your explorer's ring to teleport to the cabbage patch. Uh, just to bear in mind, I have got my leprechaun set to add the compost automatically. Um, so once you've teleported, just head your way north and then rake the second herb patch and then plant the seed just like the first one. The next location is just right clicking uh, your hat and teleport into Mauritania and then you will end up at the herb patch for your third location. A couple more ways of getting to this location is by using cannabis lodestone and running east or using an ectophile glass and running west. And then what you want to do is just uh, rake and then plant your next seed. 
The next patch is by using the modified Botanist Mask to teleport to the Cathabee Herb Patch. Now if you don't have the Mask, you can use the Lodestone to teleport to Cathabee or you can use a Camelot Teleport and then just run to the Herb Patch and again rake and then plant your seed. The next patch after this is by using your cloak to teleport to the Mala Farm. Again, if you don't have the cloak, you can use the Arno Lodestone. I've said that wrong again. And then just uh, run a little bit to the higher patch. Again, rake and then plant the seed. The next area is by using your Crystal Teleport Seed to go to this district just here. I'm not going to pronounce it. Um, if you don't have the teleport seed, you can just use the lodestone to prif, then make your way to the herb patch, and then again, rake the herb patch and plant your next seed. Last but not least is the one in the wilderness by using the wilderness sword. Uh, just bear in mind uh, to turn off your PvP if you don't want to get attacked by other players. Also, if you do feel uncomfortable taking your gear and your inventory setup, you can bank it just before. Just remember to just take your seed with you and then you'll be teleported right next to the herb patch. Then just rake and then plant your last seed. If you don't have the wilderness sword, you can use the wilderness lodestone and then run to this location in the wildy. Um, but if you do, then it just makes your life a lot easier. And then what you want to do is run to this obelisk just here and then teleport your way back to a low enough level to teleport out. Just a quick note that right? you won't be able to choose the location until you complete the hard tasks. Um, if you haven't, then you just keep cycling through until you get low enough to teleport out. Okay, so that is your herb run complete until the next day when you will be able to um, pick the herbs yourself. Uh, so now we're moving on to Yakide. Now all I've done is use the lodestone to teleport to the Fromanic Providence and then I just want to make my way uh, northwest through this little entrance and then I'm going to be taking the boat to Jadhidso. Um, it's just here by right clicking uh, this guy and then the shop is on the island. Once you've made your way onto the island, all you want to do is get off this um, dock and then make your way through the gate if it's closed. And the shop is just a little bit northwest. You just want to right click the woman in the shop and then buy all the Yakhide boxes, open them up and then you are done. The next location you want to go is the spa town of Uglog. So just open up your map interface and use the lodestone to teleport to Uglog and then just make your way into the town itself. Once you've made yourself into the town, you just want to make your way into the middle and then right click the uh, meat woman called Shagur and then just buy all of the boxed uh, meat. Then just do the same as you did with Yakide, right click the meat to open it up, and then you can sell the meat later on at the exchange or just somewhere else. Then all you wanna do is just make your way west uh, from the bank, right click forward and open up the shop, scroll all the way down and then buy all the boxes of feathers, then open them up again and then sell them when you are ready. Okay, so once you have done all of that, you just want to bank every item apart from your Wicked Hood, your Grace of the Elves, your Pickaxe and your Attuned um, Crystal and then just have a Yak in your inventory. And the next thing we'll be doing is mining the sandstone and then making it into uh, crystal and potion flasks. So the first thing you want to do is use the Menephos lodestone to teleport to the center of Menephos. Then make your way east and through these gates. 
Now, just a little heads up, you won't be able to go through until you have completed contact and you won't be able to come back until you have completed fight club. But once you've done at least contact, you can make your way through and then just make your way south, trade the merchant. And the first thing you want to do is just buy the feathers before we even start doing sandstone. Okay, just make your way down these steps and then trade the merchant. Uh, to buy a thousand, it will cost you 1.5 mil, but you don't need to worry because once you sell them, you can sell them for around 1.7 or 8, so you will always make a profit from those. Then after you have bought the feathers from the merchant, just make your way north, back up the steps, then make your way to the opposite side, down the steps, and then there will be a shortcut just to the east. Now this can only be mined if you have completed the elite uh, desert achievements. Um, so this is the first place you would go if you have done that, but if not, you would skip this bit and then we would go on to the second area, which I will show you in just a moment. So all you have to do is make your way through that little shortcut and then there will be a redstone rock. Uh, summon your familiar and then just start mining the rock until you have a full inventory of sandstone. Once you've mined all the sandstone for this location, you just want to go to this district just here and you just want to teleport and this will teleport you to the resource dungeon that you need 115 dungeoneering for. Now if you do have 115 dungeoneering then you can uh, do this as your next one but if you don't then you can just skip this one and then we can move on to the third place. So the next area you want to go to, which I can pronounce, is called Ifel. So open up the um, teleport options with your crystal and then teleport to the district like this. Once you've teleported, just make your way northwest and then click on the robust glass machine and this will turn your first lot of sandstone into glass and then you can turn the glass into your first lot of potion glass. Once you've made your uh, first inventory of potion flasks, you just want to bank your whole inventory, go back to the area you just were, and now you're going to be mining your first inventory of crystal sandstone. If you have your Grace of the Elves equipped, then the Searing Spirits do spawn. Uh, if you do click it, you get a random item sent to your bank, I think from the drop table, so that could always be useful while you're doing this daily as well. After you've got your full inventory of crystal sandstone, you want to do exactly the same. Just go onto the glass machine and then turn it into glass and then turn it into crystal potions. If you have a familiar that can hold a lot of items like a yak or a mammoth, you can summon them and they can hold your crystal flask for you while you do your next inventory load. Uh, but if you don't, you can just bank your items and then carry on and um, mine your next lot of sandstone. Once you've turned your second lot of glass into flasks, you just want to bank your familiar items and your inventory items into your bank. The next place you want to go to is back to Ooglog uh, by using the lodestone. So just open up your map interface and then teleport there. Then once outside, you just want to make your way east, uh, not into the town itself, but along the wall. And then you'll find your next lot of uh, sandstone just along the way. So with this sandstone, I mine myself a whole inventory and I put it into my familiar. Uh, if you don't have a familiar, then you can just go ahead and make your first lot of flasks. And then I just mine myself my second lot of inventory sandstone until the rock has depleted. Then you would make your way through the little shortcut and then you would use the glass machine in the town to make uh, the glass into your first lot of patient flasks. 
then afterwards you would just bank the inventory you have and take out the remaining sandstone from your familiar and then make your last batch of potion flasks uh, using the machine. Go ahead and bank your remaining flasks and that is sandstone done. Now the last couple of things to do on the daily is to use your wicked hood and teleport yourself to the top of the wizard's tower. Then make your way uh, just south through the rune crafting portal and then you will be um, in the area with the rune goldberg machine. So once you click the uh, machine, you'll have three slots for three different types of runes. Now the bottom rune uh, you can find out using your rune crafting cape. Uh, if the rune is too expensive, you can just go ahead and swap that out for an elemental rune. So the different outcomes you can get are starting from the best tier is green face with 1000, green face with 2000, yellow face with 1000, yellow face with 2000, red face with 1000, red face with 2000. So the amount of runes you use doesn't affect the amount of this wax you get, it's the colour of the face that does. So generally you just want to find the happiest faces for all three slots to generate the most amount of this wax. Now if you find yourself a green face you can mix and match the others to get the best outcome. With yellow, uh, worst case is you find red, uh, but you can just keep doing this until you're happy with the this wax amount. Uh, just bear in mind the more times you switch about, the more runes you use. Uh, this will be shown on the right hand side and once you're happy just press combine and then you will get this one. Also just a little heads up as well if you do choose to use other runes it's not always 1000, 2000 sometimes with like death runes and blood runes it's like 400 so just bear that in mind as well. And last but not least is the um, Wicked Hood teleport system to get to a altar. Now if you've used the Omni Talisman on your hood you can go to any one of these but if you just use specific tiara and talismans you can only go to specific ones and then heads up you can only use normal essence and not pure essence when you do this method. So for this I do blood runes but you just want to do whichever one uh, you can at your highest rune crafting level and you just want to right click your hood, withdraw the essence and you get a whole inventory of essence and all you want to do is just press the altar to turn it into runes and then just rinse and repeat. Also if you do have the wicked outfit from the rune crafting guilds you can equip it to withdraw more essence per day I think up to 175 which just means you can uh, make more runes and then sell more runes for more profit. So yep, yeah, that is everything uh, for the daily run. So on the right hand side I have all the stuff I have gathered for the daily. Now this will only happen after the herbs have grown, but this is the amount of money uh, thereabouts you will make. Uh, you have to minus the fact you bought 1.5 mil worth of feathers, so you only make 200-300k from that. But everything else is basically profit if you minus the fact you use some runes for the viswax and you bought some items from a shop. But um, overall it's decent money per day. And you can do the herbs uh, more than once a day, uh, but everything else is daily, so you'd have to come back the next day to sort that out. If I have left anything else out, I will try to leave it in the uh, description below. Uh, if you do have any questions, just let me know, and I will try my best to answer. But yeah, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next one.